Hi everyone, my name's Marianne. So if you're watching this for the first time, my name's Marianne. I'm the owner and the counsellor at Marianne Hanson Counselling Service. I specialise in working with couples and individuals in the areas of stress, depression, low self-esteem and relationships. And in this video, what I want to talk about are six tips for better relationships with your family. So in most cases, we can't choose our family. We're just born into a family and that's it. You don't have any choice. You can't choose their personalities, you can't choose um, their gender, you can't choose whether you're going to get along or not. None of that is going to come into it, you don't have a choice. In other cases, people can choose their families. So if you're um, part of a blended family, if you marry into a family, if you are part of a foster family or if you're adopted, it doesn't matter how it happens. It can still cause issues if you're within a family where you just don't have good relationships with others. So I'm going to give you six tips here. So the first one is to make an effort. Now this might seem simple, but there's lots of families where people either say, I'm not going to make the effort because the other person never tries. So there's no like texting, there's no phone calls, there's no making the effort to meet up. I can personally speak on this because I do find in my family that a lot of times I'm making more of the effort, I'm sending the texts, I'm um, re uh, trying to organise meeting up, I'm the one initiating things, but it's just been like that for a long time, um, even though I'm quite busy, for me it's still valuable enough for me to do that, I'm never going to say well I'm just going to not make an effort with my family because they don't try as hard, but what I have found is when I make more of an effort and I really put a lot of energy into it, I get it, it gets received back, so then I start to have people contacting me. So I think don't turn it into sort of a game or starting to like say, well, they don't phone me or they don't text me, so I'm not texting them, because that's when you have these long periods of time where no one's really speaking to each other or where people are just waiting and seeing if someone will reach out to them. So that's the first tip for better relationships. The second one is stop trying to change your family. Now, a lot of these are actually things that I can relate to because they are um, from my personal experience. So what can happen is you can get into this cycle where you're not happy with someone within your family. So it could be a sibling, it could be your parent, it could be someone else in the family. So you're constantly trying to either change them by talking to other people about them. Oh, this person, they're always doing this or they're always doing that. So you, maybe you're just talking to other people about them or you're constantly telling them will you stop doing this will you stop doing that either way you're not if someone if that's someone's personality but also if they don't have any reason to change and if they don't want to change there's nothing you can really do so you need to get to a point of acceptance when you get to a point where you accept your family for who they are then it just becomes so much easier because you know that if you go to that particular person that's how they're going to behave, that's how they're going to talk. Um, if you go to an, another person in the family, you, you accepted, that's their personality. So example might be, you can't keep like, borrowing money to people in your family and expecting to pay it back when, um, expecting them to pay you back when previously, you've, every time you've borrowed money, they've not paid you back. You can't keep going to someone in your family for sympathy or because you want empathy about your situation when you know that's not how they operate where they just like laugh or shrug it off or they just say, what's the big deal? Stop being so sensitive. So you have to understand that person's personality and just make a decision that you're not going to try and change them. The third thing is don't get into family politics. Try to stay neutral as much as you can. Because I'm a counsellor within the family, lots of times people will come to me and they'll say, oh, this is bothering me or this is happening or this is happening. I listen. Sometimes I'll give my opinion, other times I won't give an opinion, I'll just listen and then just um, leave it at that. But I don't get into, I think the key thing is when you get into po family politics, you're always going to lose out because if you take one particular um, person's side, then when they make up, you know, after the argument's ended, you end up being stuck in the middle because you've chosen a side. Staying neutral is probably the best way to go about this, but also don't get into the politics. Tell that person to go direct to the person and speak to them, or you can be a listener, but you don't have to contribute to the discussion. The fifth, fourth thing is to understand your individual family members' personalities. So it's similar to not trying to change them, but it's also about taking the time to get to know and understand them. 
I have a massive family, so all I can say is I've got nine, there's eight siblings, eight of us. Then you've also got, I think it's probably at 18 now for nieces and nephews. They've all got different personalities. You know, when we're all in a room together, or lots of us, there's a lot of, um, we get on really well, but there's a lot of different personalities floating around, big personalities as well in my family. So for me, it's just understanding the personalities of people. So you know how to either approach them, you know how to communicate with them, but you also accept them and that's just who they are. So for many years, for me, I tried to like, not change the person, but try to understand them, try to work them out, try to think, why is that person doing that? Or why is it that every time I end up speaking to that person, I end up feeling worse than I started? Or why is it that this person's always causing arguments at family get togethers? Why is this person always trying to take over and be controlling? And then I just said to myself, do you know what? That is their personality. So the minute you accept that and you stop trying to work it out, figure it out, interpret it, change it, it just becomes easier. It's not your burden. I mean, when I went to Jamaica with my sister and she was doing all sorts of behaviours, <laughs> my mum don't like the fact that she's smoking, like, because she said women in Jamaica, they don't just walk around the street smoking, but my sister did. And my mum kept saying, say something to her, say something. I said, you know what, mum, she's no reflection on me. She's an adult. What my sister does, I said, doesn't reflect on me. I'm not the one smoking. Just because she's my sister, I don't control what she does. She has to take her own embarrassment. Um, so sometimes we just have to understand people's personalities and allow them to be that themselves. If they want to cho choose to change or to be different, then that's up to them. But we don't have to take that responsibility to do that. The fifth one is learning to forgive and forget. It's no point holding grudges with people for years and years um, where there's lots of families where people are just not speaking. And sometimes you ask them, what's the reason you you stopped speaking? And they can't even remember because it's been so long. They're like, I haven't spoke to my brother in 20 years. I haven't spoke to my sister in 10 years. But they can't remember why. Life is too short. So I think in some cases it might be really hard to forget what someone has done. But sometimes you can say to yourself, do you know what? I'm going to forgive this because I don't want to hold on to that like pain that I'm experiencing. So I'll forgive it but I'll never forget what my sister did or my brother did or my parent did. Um, it's just something to consider. If you want a better relationship and you don't have to be in a room, my biggest thing is I don't want to be in a room full of family where I'm having to avoid people or where there's, you know, I'm saying I can't, I have to limit myself. And that's one thing that's important for me. Just in general, I don't want to be walking down the street and feel I've got enemies so I can't go to particular areas or I can't... Um, be around in certain places because I'm looking over my shoulder worrying about who is coming after me and that sort of thing so I think your family is your family no matter what so yeah they might have done some really bad things so you have to decide that maybe you're not ready to forgive or to forget but in minor things that people have done maybe it's something to consider and the final thing is to stop seeing your family as the enemy in some cases, people will literally be talking about their families, though, you know, yeah, they're blood, they're my relatives, but they're not my family, and really feel like the family are doing things personally to hurt them. But what if you turned that around and reframed it to think, where's the evidence or what is there to suggest that my family are intentionally doing this to hurt me? So maybe you could look at it a different way and think, OK, well, why would... What if I looked at it from a different angle? What if I said that they was not malicious in what they said or did? Their intention wasn't to hurt me. They still hurt me anyway, but they're not the enemy. They do deep down, they care about me. I've had to do that a few times in, I don't know how many years. I've fallen out with different people in the family and then I've thought they're out to get me and they're, my sister is only saying this because it's like, because she um, wants me to fail or my sister's always trying to do this or do this. This is just in general. And then when I've looked at it, I thought, you know what, what's, where's the evidence? There's no evidence really because deep down you know they care about you because there's evidence to suggest they've done kind things. There's evidence to suggest that this happened or this has happened. We can always find that evidence to prove in many cases our family are not the enemy. They're not out to get us. All the things that they're saying or doing sometimes is coming from them. It's the issue they have with themselves. It's done in a way that they're trying to be um, loving and kind, but it's just, and um, they're not 
putting it in the right way. And we just have to sometimes give people a break and say, do you know what? They messed up. How they communicated that wasn't the best way. When they took that action, it wasn't the right thing. But they're still my family, so I'm going to give it another try. So they're my six tips for better relationships with your family. Please let me know what you think. Leave your comments. Don't forget to share this video if you think someone else will benefit. And consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy the content. Thanks for watching. See you all soon. Bye.